Welcome to this overview of the Easy Rider Pro 2025 Pasture Rangeland and Forage King Improvements. My name is Ali Skelsky and I'm a member of NAU Country's IT Marketing and Training Team. In Reinsurance Year 2025, PRF Policy Keying has been simplified with updates to allow for easier keying of intervals, the rollout of more consistent screens and grid layouts, and the elimination of the need to manually set up units for intervals. So let's dive in and let me show you first the new intervals tab. I'm going to click into this existing PRF policy and just point out that instead of an acreage APH tab, you will see it's now titled intervals. If I click on intervals, this will bring you into the intervals tab area. In the intervals tab, you will mainly work with interval groups and that's what each one of these are. And because this was an existing policy with coverages already laid out, you can see those interval groups are automatically here for me. Now, also inside of the intervals tab, you will see the interval group area as well as the interval acreage area. We'll dive into how you can navigate this area, how you can add interval groups and edit them. But for a moment, I would like to also jump into a new PRF policy. If I click over here to a new temporary policy that I just set up, you will see that there are no coverages listed. And you might also notice that the acreage APH tab is here as opposed to the new intervals tab. And that's simply because there are no coverages on the policy yet. As soon as you do key a PRF coverage onto the policy, this tab will change from being titled acreage APH to intervals. So I'm gonna go ahead and endorse out the policy and quickly add a coverage and show you when that change takes place. Now once I hit the save button, you will notice that the acreage APH tab will turn into the intervals tab. Now if I jump over to the intervals tab, you will see again the interval group grid area, which of course is blank right now since this is a brand new policy. For a moment, let's explore a little bit more about navigating the intervals tab in general. Again, the main area is gonna be where your interval groups will live. And interval groups are now replacing the need to manually set up units for PRF policies. But in order to add an interval group or edit or delete one, you're gonna to wanna to draw your attention down here to the interval groups area. The other area that you'll see here in the intervals tab is the intervals acreage area. Now the interval groups area is going to house information and options for the whole of an interval group. The interval acreage section, this applies to individual intervals within an interval group. Here's a navigation tip. You can actually hover your mouse here over this line, select it, and then drag this area of the screen either up or down depending on where you would like to have more viewing real estate. Okay, let's talk about adding a new interval group. To do that, you simply come down here to the interval group section and click the add button. This will pop up the interval group save and add screen. To create an interval group, all you need to do is fill out the information here in the coverage info section first. You can adjust the share percent, which will default to 100%, and you can either select a shareholder name from the dropdown if one is entered, or you can come in here and you can enter them. Next up, that will open up the grid ID section. To select a grid ID, you can use the dropdown in a variety of ways to either search for and manually select an ID number, or you can actually click in and then start typing in this area. And the search box will highlight or outline the nearest number to what you've typed in using your keyboard, or you also can come over here and click the lookup option. When you select the lookup option, this rainfall grid locator screen is going to appear. And this is where you can come and either choose to search for your grid ID by FTF, lat long, address, or township, or you also can use the pin option and simply just pin a location on the map and then click OK. All these options are available and I'm just going to go ahead and manually choose a grid ID using the dropdown. 
Now once you've done that, the interval election section of the screen is going to become available to you. From here, you need to specify your interval percentages. And you can do that, again, manually by typing numbers in. Now as I do that, you will notice that there is a percent of value totals that's going to be totaling up as you work here. If I hover over this warning, you will see that the interval election must add up to 100%. So you'll always have a running total of the percentages that you need to equal that 100% as you're working in this area of the screen. Now also, if you type in something that is technically not allowed, Again, you will get some warning or validation messages that you can hover over and get more information. So this lets me know that my election cannot be made in an overlapping interval. And so I see that twice. That lets me know that I, uh, of course, need to rethink um, where I am typing my, my interval percentages. Now you also can automatically have EasyWriter Pro set your interval percentages uh, by using these odd or even buttons. So if I were to go ahead and select odd, it's gonna go ahead and put in equal or as close to equal percentages and non-overlapping intervals. Or of course, I could also choose even. The odd or even represents if a interval time frame starts with a month that technically is an odd number or an even number. At any point, you can also come in here, click reset, and you can go ahead and revert back to what you originally had, and again, start over. Once you're done, you can choose to save. So that will just save the screen and it'll pop your interval group into view. Or you can choose save and add, what will actually save your work and then pull up an additional interval group screen for you to continue to add interval groups. I'll select that now. And again, you can see a new window has popped up for me. If I decide I do not want to enter a new interval group at this time, I can click cancel. And now you will see the one interval group that I did enter has officially appeared in the interval group grid area. Now you'll see that the numbers and letters are italicized, just really representing that this is brand new, that I haven't saved or committed the policy just yet after creating this interval group. At any point, I can go ahead and continue to add an additional interval group. I could view or edit my existing interval group, or I could actually choose to delete. Now remember, this was my policy that was new. Now if I click on over, back to this policy, this was the existing policy that had existing interval groups, I can certainly go ahead and take a look at the interval groups more closely. And I can do that one of two ways. I can choose to either double click any line within the interval group like this, that will pop up my interval group, save and add screen. And it's gonna automatically highlight the interval um, that I technically clicked on the line for. Now I also could go ahead and highlight any line in an interval group and then click the view edit button down here in the interval group section. That again is gonna pop up the screen and because I had highlighted this line here, that's gonna be the interval percent that is going to be automatically highlighted. Now you will notice that with an existing interval group, you can make changes to your interval elections area. So any of the interval percentages can be changed. However, you are not able to change any of the coverage information above or of course select a different grid ID. If for some reason you need to make changes to this information, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and delete the interval group and start over. And if I need to do that, all I need to do is make sure I do have one line in the interval group I'd like to delete, highlight it, and then come on down here and select the delete button. But this warning message is very important. It says that if you remove the selected interval group, it will include all associated intervals. So it will not just delete this one interval line, it's gonna delete the whole entire group. So if I'm okay with that, I'm going to click yes. The screen's gonna refresh and you will see that that interval group has now gone away. Again, to add a new group, I just click add. select the information I need to select in my coverage information, select my correct grid ID, and again, set up the interval percentages. And hit save again. And just like that, I have a new interval group. But let's say that you are accustomed to doing most of your work in the easy mapping screen. 
You can edit and create interval groups also in Easy Mapping. Let me show you how. You simply go into Easy Mapping. And inside of the Easy Mapping screen, if you go over and select the Add or Edit Intervals icon, this will bring up the Manage Intervals screen. And in the Manage Intervals screen, you can add an interval or you can select an existing interval group and then select to view or edit that interval. In just a moment, we will be jumping into the acreage area and talking about any changes made to how you can key acres, and how you can view, edit, and or set your points of references. But before we go in there, I will also note that how you map fields and generate views in 2025 PRF policies has not changed. But I do want to point out one difference found here under Map Layers. I wanted to point out that down here at the bottom of this panel, under the Transportation and Political section, there is a new layer. And this layer is called the parcel layer. When enabled, the parcel map layer will display landowners names over the applicable area of land. Once this is enabled, you do have to zoom into the map to see that information. Okay, let's now go in to the acreage area. In the past, when you selected the acreage option at the top of the screen, it would have opened Quick River. Now this screen has been renamed RI Acreage. And inside of RI Acreage, you will be able to find two tabs, the RI Acreage tab and the Point of Ref tab. The screen will default to the IR Acreage tab, and it's within the RI Acreage tab that you can expand each view and key acres or change your interval percentages like you have in the past. The Point of Reference functionality that used to be accessible down here with an icon is now accessible here in a tab. If I were to select the tab, it is going to prompt me to save my changes. And if I want to save my changes, of course, select yes. Now you will see here that I am getting a validation error. It says I must have reported acres when percentages are entered. So because of this top view not being complete, the system is not allowing me to move on. If you're not prepared at the time to complete the information needed, you certainly can back out of the screen, discard your changes, and if you need to go in view or change your points of reference, you can still go up here to the hamburger menu, and in the dropdown, you can also access point of reference here, like you have in the past. Now, if I go back in to the acreage area and into the RI acreage screen, to speed things along, I will just, for the moment, update zero acres in this view. So I am allowed to go ahead and select point of reference and save my work. And by going into this next screen, you will be in the same point of reference screen that you are used to using in the past. For now, I am going to exit Easy Mapping. I'm going to stay in the intervals tab to give a few layout tips. The interval group display can be adjusted, sorted, and filtered. The group panel can also be hidden or re-expanded. So for example, I can select or hover over any of the columns inside of the group panel area. I can click the up or down arrow to have the information in that column sort. I also can select the filter icon and drop down my filter options. I can certainly select a column and I can move it if I would like to do that. Now, if you make any changes, you certainly at any point can come down to the interval group area, right click and you can reset your grid preferences. That will put it back to the default setting. When you're up by the group panel area, you also can right click and you can choose to be in a fully expanded mode, which is the default view here. You can do a full collapse, or I can go in and I can clear the grouping. This will bring you into a more traditional flat view if you would like. And again, if you want to set things back, right click with inside of your grid lines and select reset grid preferences. 
Last but not least, I would like to point out a new RI Policy Details report that can be found in the Report Center. To get there, I'm going to go ahead and select to go into the Report Center. The RI Policy Details report is under the Underwriting category, Subcategory, Policy, and that's where you will find it. This report will list various details for all Rainfall Index policies. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this overview of the EasyWriter Pro 2025 PRF Keying Improvement Updates. Thanks for watching.